Welcome to another episode of To the Fullest with Jason Froberg. Make sure you give us a like, subscribe, ring the bell, follow us on social media, and support us on Patreon and PayPal. Today on the podcast, longtime friend of mine, Las Vegas adult entertainer, Mason Knox. Yo. What up, bro? How's it going? <laughs> How you doing today? Doing pretty good. Thank uh, you. Thanks for taking the time to come on the podcast for me. I thought it was a, a good choice for our 69th episode, so I appreciate you coming out uh, in this uh, beautiful time here. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. The 69 used to be my favorite number growing up, so I'm sure I'm sure you're fond of it today as well. That uh, that rapper kid ruined the slogan 69, but what what rapper kid? What are you talking about? What happened? The 69 kid that's like got all the face tattoos and like got told he was a rat, and he's got all the shit against him because he snitched on all his friends or something i'm just saying like back when i was a kid 69 was cool but that kid ta that that kid tarnished 69 some bitch oh i know who you're talking about the, the guy, rainbow kid the guy has who's the rainbow got hair the and stuff. rainbow hair in the 69 it's just, what the fuck is his name i want to pull up a picture of my fuck i can't think of his name right now it's 69 huh it's 69 <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i mean i was said i'm not you know, I'm not talking shit. It's just when I grew up, 69 was cool, but nowadays it means a snitch. Oh yeah, it, I guess it does mean a snitch because he uh, he snitched on all those yeah. uh, gangsters, huh? He brags about it. <sighs> <laughs> he brags about it. I don't know how he's still alive. Uh, well, you know, you know how life the fuck is you funny. Pull that off. But uh, yeah, 69 is a sexual reference that back in the 90s everyone thought was a, a really fun thing to say. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's a fun thing to do as well. I uh, I don't mind it too much. Oh, okay. I see. 6 9 I got that motherfucker right here. This fucking Goomba. Yeah. I mean, he's a successful rapper, I guess, but just, uh, I don't know the guy. But it's like when you hear 69 nowadays, you think of him, you don't think of the... Okay. You don't think of the, the sexual... Uh, what would you call it? A sexual, sexual slogan? position? Or slogan? That'd be slogan? Position, slogan, you know, ah, 69. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess so. And we're not in middle school anymore, so. Right. You know, what are you going to do? So you wrote a book. Or you're writing a book. Yeah, pretty much wrote. It's not published yet, but it's, uh, 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 it's in the final stages. So yeah, I've, 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 I've written a book. That's awesome. I read uh, a sample of your book today. Okay. Thank you for sending that over to me, man. You're welcome. And I thoroughly enjoyed it, actually. It's, uh, it's quite, a, uh, quite a fun little tale you weave there uh, on that sample chapter you sent me. Thank you. And I don't know if I, what I can give away about the thing no, you or can whatever. Talk about but, uh, whatever. As far as full disclosure, uh, as far as what I sent you, talk about whatever you want to talk about because I, yeah. I, I want to be able to send that to people so they have a sample so you have like an idea of what I'm all about. So feel free to bring up anything you want. Well, no, just uh, you know the whole the whole uh, tale of you moving here from Indiana, and becoming an adult entertainer, and doing all these wild, wild parties in Las Vegas, and you you're really getting into the nitty gritty details of it, which is nice, man. I mean, you are not vague at all. It is uh, it is uh, it's fun. It's fun to read. It's enticing. I look forward to reading some more of it. I do too. And uh, and I know coming up when we were, we were uh, you know playing music together or whatnot, you used to tell me all kinds of crazy ass tales about your uh, your stripper times and these private parties on the strip. So I'm sure it's going to be an insane book, man. Yeah, it's great. You know, doing this job, you know, you meet you just you, you literally you, you meet all kinds of people. Yeah, I mean, all walks of life out there in this world, you know. And uh, uh, there's something about Vegas in general, like that when People come out here, it's like, uh, you know, a lot of people, you'll get your middle class people that like save up all year to come out here and party. And you got your super rich Uber people that come out here to get away from their stressful lives. But it's like you see <clears throat> the best sides or the most party sides of people out here. They're, I don't want to know their true self. But the true wild self of people, I've, like I said, I, I've definitely probably damn near seen it all. It, it'd be there's very few things that would surprise me at this point. <laughs> I bet, man. 100%. Uh, yeah, that's the beautiful part about Las Vegas. You, know, you can come out here and fulfill your wildest desire. And, uh, you know, there's something for everybody out here. And, you know, no discrimination, man. It's, uh, it's a beautiful thing. And people definitely do. They come in and push hard 
against whatever they think they can get away with out here. And, uh, and it's fun to watch. It's fun to be on the strip watching people make a fool of themselves and see how hard they can party and see how hard they can really go. It's like, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, people come out here and push it. Like, you know, yeah. a lot of my business is, uh, you know, I, I, I'm going into these people's hotel suites. You know, and, and and when you go into these people's hotel suites, you're, you're you know you're around a bunch of you know a lot of times they are they are they all know each other. You're stepping into their world. Yeah. You know, but you're stepping into their Vegas world. You said people come out here and see how far they can push it. Yeah. So yeah, now there's been some. Uh, I've had some pretty. Uh, I've had some pretty fun times at these fucking private events. You know, they. Uh, <sighs> these girls, you know, they're wild, baby. They can be wild. That's yeah. for sure. One hundred percent. You want to uh, you want to uh, share a, a little snippet a story with us of uh, some kind of crazy thing that you've been experiencing maybe lately? Well, let me think here. Like I said, sometimes they all run together. Yeah. So like I did. Uh, let me think what happened here. This last weekend was pretty normal. Um, it's like a normal thing. I seem like that people or girls are doing more the days is. Uh, I had a party a few weeks ago. It was at the uh, they hired me and another guy. Um, it was at the uh, it was one of the top floor uh, uh, suites they had at the Palms or excuse me uh, the Palms place. For those of you who don't know, in Vegas we have the Palms, um, and next to it in the same lot basically you have the Palms place, which are uh, they're like luxury condos and suites if you will. I know people live there, so that's like a place where you can actually buy somewhere. But I know they still kind of it still ran very much like a hotel. There's just no casino. It's yeah. just one building. So. We're at the Palms Place, and uh, 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 shout out to Santos. I'm working with a, 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 a co-worker of mine, Santos. Cool guy. We're doing the party together, and, uh, um, you know, you come to Vegas, people always want to party. So, you know, the shots and alcohol is a given. That's <laughs> always a given. There's going to be more usually, but they, uh, of course, they had, you know, they were doing cocaine. And, like, doing the cocaine is just not... It's not good enough just to do it off a table or a mirror. So they, uh, uh, we were charging them uh, 20 bucks a pop uh, to take uh, snort cocaine off our boners. <laughs> if, our hard cocks, if you will. Uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, just, it's just, yeah. I don't know if that's, it doesn't seem that crazy to me anymore. But, but yeah, that's something that happened that I, I don't think that most people uh, experience in their lifetime. Nice. And I experience it probably every other weekend. Yeah, and this is what the book is about. These yeah. crazy stories of you like basically living some kind of uh insane sexual fantasy that most people, you know, think in the back of their mind, you know, if only. If only. Yeah. Uh, there's some probably truth to that. Like I said, I, I, I you know, I hit the ground running when it came out here to do this adult things. Uh um, for those of you who've seen some of my, my, my previous podcasts and stuff, um, I, I, you know, I come from Indiana. Um, I had entered a, a competition um, in northern Indiana up by Chicago called Nudes of Poppin'. Uh, had ended up winning a, f a few of the, the categories there and, and got some job offers that come out here to Vegas. And uh, it has been a fucking wild ride since. It's, 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 it's gotten more normal now that I've gotten older, but it's like, you know, it's, it's, sometimes it's hard for me to, like how you just phrased it, how I like a sex crazed, it kind of is. Yeah. But you get so fucking used to it. You just get so fucking used to it, man. I just, it's like, like I said, like when you're asking me about what's the craziest thing, I'm trying to think like, well, what's crazy these days? Like if yeah. you would ask me that same question, you know, I've been doing this almost 16 years. You know, I'll be 38 this year and I've been in Vegas doing this since I was 22. And if you would have asked me this 16 years ago, I'd be like, holy shit, you wouldn't believe it. Yeah. They had cocaine, they had <laughs> drinks. Oh my God, they were doing lines off our cocks. Now uh, I'm just like, oh, you know, they charge them extra. They did some lines off our boners and, you know, we had a good time. <laughs> another Saturday. That, yeah, was well. a, that was a Saturday night, actually. It yeah. was just another Saturday night. And, 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 and again, like I, I, I say this all the time, it's like I, I, I don't know what I'm going to, to run into this weekend. You know, it's it's always a different set of circumstances, different party. I know for a fact right now when we have Wednesday, yeah, I'm booked fully tomorrow night. I'm booked fully Friday night. I'm booked fully Saturday night, and my Sunday's open as of now. But it's like I, again, it's like I don't know what I'm walking into this weekend. Who knows what kind of group of people I'm going to meet? Majority of the time, it's going to be a really great time. Like I said, you see the people's best sides here. Yeah, they're in celebration mode. You know, people are usually pretty friendly and uh, pretty accepting of what's going on around them, and. Like, uh, just trying to have as much fun as they possibly can. You know, most of the time they saved up all year, if not for a couple years, to, to come, come out, out here, here and, and blow a shit ton of cash and live out some kind of wild fantasy they've had up their ass. 
and they're you know and you're providing that service for them which is uh beautiful if you, if you ask me you it know? is it's great yeah i always looked at myself as someone who might you know you, you have your you know not every party's gonna go the greatest because you know you run into all walks of life but for 95 percent of the time every party's amazing and you do you make you make people happy you make them smile you come in you're part of like i mean Again, not talking myself up or anything, but it's like <clears throat> these people that plan these parties and, and especially like in the Midwest or these girls who save up all year, it's like there's a certain amount of explosiveness that they expect from you. Yeah, of 100%. course. 100%. Bring the party. I'm usually the life of the party. You come in, you get the party going, and, and it's, it's always a great time. Uh, one, one of the fun ones I did, I had one just last Sunday. The, uh, the, uh, the new Top Gun movie came out. Oh, I haven't seen it yet. Neither have I, but the Top Gun outfit is super popular. So I, I, have, I have the whole Tom Cruise outfit <laughs> down. If you go to my TikTok yeah, um, and you actually pull up one of the, the I ones, right I will tell you, I'll, I'll have you click on one. And it's only a clip, but that, this was last Sunday right there. This was last Sunday at the, uh, where was this at? Oh, fuck. Give me a second. They all run together. Where did I go? That was at the uh, that was at the uh, Aria, I believe. And uh, I work at the Aria. Like. Really, I work there too. Ah, uh, so that was, uh, I have that was that was a girl's birthday party, and they had uh, because of Top Gun, and we get that a lot now. They wanted the whole Top Gun outfit, so yeah. that's always fun to do. That's a good outfit right there, man. Yeah, man. I mean, it's it's whatever's hot, you know. I, I got a, I got every kind of outfit you can think of. You know, most of the time. You go into these things and you're doing like hotel security or like cop or firefighter. But like when like a movie comes out that's super popular, like I, I've done, you know, for all you nerds out there, I consider myself a nerd too. But it's like, yeah, I've come in as Harry Potter. Okay. <laughs> I've come in as, as Legolas, 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 Legolas uh, uh, Lord yeah. of the Rings. Yeah. Legolas. I've done that guy, the long blonde wig and the bow and fucking arrow and everything. Uh, um, whatever uh, your fantasy is. I did, do, you, do you remember a a detective show called Columbo? Yeah. I went in as Columbo one time, bro. <laughs> These fucking girls. There's no... But that, that Harry Potter oh. party I did, I've done a couple of them. But the newest one I did was like six weeks ago. Maybe a little longer. Maybe eight weeks. It doesn't matter. But they went all out. It was at the MGM Signature, signature Tower. And Freaking Columbo. That, like that. So that was technically so that Columbo, you have it pulled up. Yeah. That was the last party yeah. I did at the Hard Rock. Oh, okay. Before they turned it into the Virgin. Yeah. We were so, just talking about that. And it was actually, remember the HRH Tower? Yeah. Yeah. It was at the Hard Rock HRH Tower. And uh, me coming as Columbo, I, uh, uh, that was the last party I ever did at the Hard Rock because now it's Virgin. Virgin. But yeah. rumor has it, they're demoing the Mirage. I heard they were. I heard they were just buying the Mirage, and they're going to demo it, and they're putting a guitar-shaped Hard Rock on the strip. I th I thought they were getting rid of the volcano, and they're keeping the building. So I've seen. I've seen. Let so me, there's let some me rumor, look it up real quick. Well, there's I've rumors seen, going around, but I'm just saying, like, I think they're going to change that drafts of it. If the Hard Rock bought that fucking property, why wouldn't you put the Hard Rock name on that fucking thing? But I heard they're going to demo it, and they're going to put a whole new guitar-shaped glass hotel on the strip. Which I absolutely think they should, but you know I'm I'm a little biased being a rock and roller. Yeah, no, for sure. No, I just I heard they were gonna just put the hard instead of saying Mirage, it's gonna say Hard Rock and keep the building and then like replace the volcano with a giant um, guitar. Guitar. Okay. Yeah, my buddy was showing me a image of it. I'm trying to find online, but I can't find it right now. But yeah, it's uh, either way. That's gonna be cool, man. And that's like I, I don't see. I, I it would make sense not to demo it because they already have the rock and roll, um, Beatles. You know, they got the Beatles in there doing the the Love Cirque show and all uh, that the, stuff going on. The Revolution. Yeah. Whatever so it's called Love, Love. Love. That's right. Yeah, that's dude. That's well, a great show. Well, back in the day where they had the uh, where they had that Mirage, there used to be a a club there called Revolution. Oh, yeah, I do. I remember Revolution. Yeah, I go-go dance there on Sunday nights. Oh, did you? Yeah. Nice. I've been everywhere. I've been everywhere, man. Yeah, I've definitely made my mark in this town. Uh, it's a good town to make your mark in, man. Yeah, I've made a good living here, man. I, I'm not going to complain. It's, it's, been a good, uh, it's, been a good, it's been a good 16, 17 years. Yeah, dude, I'm telling you, man. I've, I've had a blast. I've been here. I just celebrated my 15th year this year. I moved out here in 2007. And uh, 15 years official, and bro, 
that has been a wild ride. It has just been insane. I look back on the amount of time that I've spent here and all the crazy things I got into. And uh, yeah, I wouldn't trade it for anything, man. I mean, what an adventure. Yeah. You know, I hear uh, that. I wouldn't trade it all. I'm yeah. glad I made the move when I made it. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing, man. Highly recommend it if anybody's out trying to do something wild with their fucking life. Yeah, life's you know, short. Move, moving to Vegas was a great call. That was a great was call. A great for, call. Yeah, 100%. 100%. And, yeah. Yeah. And I got to meet you. My yeah. very good friend. And then we got to tour around the country and play in a rock band together and yeah. have a fucking blast. We had a know? good time. Yeah. Punk rock, yeah. baby. Oh, yeah. Baba Booey, Baba Booey, Howard Stern's penis. Ah, yeah, man. And we just celebrated what was it? The, or, well, you know, the eight year anniversary of that uh, that video you sent me the other day. Uh, yeah, the whole uh, ABC uh, Valley View Live. Yeah, man. Six. What did we get? Like five, six million views on that thing? Yeah. That was ridiculous. Yeah, we had a six, seven. Yeah, I think it was like six. It's like six million hits on it. I just, uh, regardless of the hits, that was a fun day. Oh, yeah. That was, I'll never right. forget that. That was a fun day. Yeah. That's all that matters. Yeah, man. Fucking, uh, yeah, smashing guitars, man. I miss that. That was some of the funnest times I ever had in my life was smashing guitars with you on stage, brother. That was fun. Really was a good time. 100, dude. <laughs> There's what? I said 100%. Oh, 100%. Yeah, dude. So, uh, but yeah, back to your, uh, back to your book, because we're not talking about Cracker Man right now, right? We're talking about Mason Knox and the, uh, the upcoming adult entertainer. When, when can we expect a book to hit the shelves? Um, let's see here. So we're in, uh, it's going to come out this fall. So I'm looking at around, uh, it'll be, it'll be about mid to late October. It's going to be out. Oh, really? That's soon, huh? Yeah. That's fantastic. It's just about done. I mean, literally like, like I, I, we're at the point now where like, it's like, like I had a meeting with my, uh, uh, I had a little zoom meeting this morning with my publicist uh, and my editor. Um, we're there. I have a few things I have to read over to make sure it's, it's done, but like it's, 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 we're there. It's done. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm just a stripper. I definitely have people helping me write this. Of course. 100%. Yeah, you should, man. You, you, otherwise, you'll come off sounding like a fucking dumbass, you know? Like, people want to write their own books, and it's like... Yes. Do you have a degree in writing and creative, you know... If you know how to do that. writing degree and English major and all this stuff. Which I, I like, don't. I, I, yeah. I have... I, I, I'd like to, you know... I do have very good English skills. But, yeah, I'm not a fucking author. Yeah. Well, yeah, okay. I, I've never done it before, so I, it was very important to me to bring in someone that could adapt to my personality and try to write it how I fucking talk. Yeah. Because that's all it is to it. I want to be able to read it and feel like it's me telling you. Okay. You know, but in a proper way that makes it easy to understand. And that's where I would probably, if I tried to write the fucking damn book myself, that's probably where I would lose myself. You know, all the little errors and trying to make things make sense and stuff like that. So yeah, I got the book coming out this, uh, uh, this, uh, this fall. It's going to be great. It's uh, called Mason Knox, um, the true story of a Las Vegas adult entertainer. Um, it's, it's great. I, I did a, uh, I done a, a podcast, uh, or TV show a, a few months back, uh, excuse me, called Soft White Underbelly. And I had just mentioned that uh, I was putting out a book and it got a lot of, it got a lot of views on that video. And uh, a lot of comments were asking about the book and stuff. So people that are asking, it, it'll be out this fall. Uh, it, it's, it's almost done. I appreciate everyone's patience. Really looking forward to this fucking thing coming out. Uh, it, it, if you guys enjoyed the stories on Soft White Underbelly, you, you're definitely going to like the stories in this book, 100%. Nice. And, uh... Yeah, I have a picture of the cover. Can I share the cover? No? You can, but just for the record, for the fans that are watching, that yeah. cover, so the cover that you're going to see, that picture was actually taken at a bachelorette party about a month ago. <laughs> so that is not the actual cover, but I'm recreating that cover for the book. Oh, okay. Because obviously I don't, you know, obviously, you know, that wasn't all planned and everything, but, but what you're seeing right now was a real party, those are real reactions, and they literally put a, a, a cell phone behind me on a stand and put a timer on it. Okay. And, I, and they did not know. And when I looked back, I just like seeing people's reactions. Yeah. They didn't know I was going to do it, and I pulled my pants down with like three seconds to go on the timer, <laughs> and those are the reactions you got when I did that. Uh, so, you uh, scoundrel you. So uh, uh, I thought it was great. It, it really kind of shows. That picture kind of shows what I do. Yeah. It's how I sit the girls down, they sit in a circle, and you give them a fucking show, baby. <laughs> uh, I love it, man. Yeah, I me too. It. That's a lot of fun. 
And then, uh, so, and then the other hot topic going around is, uh, your transition into, like, uh, the major, like, porn industry and everything like that, man. Do you want to talk about that at all? We can. I, I, uh, um, uh, I've definitely gotten into more of the, uh, you know, I've always kind of done stuff like that. Like, a a big part of my business that I I have, uh, is, uh, you've ever heard of, like, cuckolding? Yeah. So, like, there's a lot of times where, 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 where I have a lot of husbands that, they come to town and they pay me handsomely to fuck their wives, <laughs> but it's not on camera. It's yeah. like, that's a private thing. And obviously I'm not going to give out any of my clients, but, um, I thought, well, fuck, I, I can, why don't I just take this and just, cause I don't care. So I was like, oh, why don't I just do this on camera and get, get paid even more. Yeah. So I've, I've, yes, I have. I've, I've, I've crossed into OnlyFans. I've worked with a, a, a great, a great. I've met some great people in the industry. Uh, you know, a shout out to Emma Rose. A shout out to Rocky Emerson. Um, there's some of the great girls I've worked with out there doing, you know, your own creative content on OnlyFans. And, and from working with those kind of uh, people, I have I've met other bigger people in the industry where I've actually gone and worked for like uh, a companies like Mind Freak, which is a a sister company I think of Brazzers. So it'd be Trans Angels. Um, and that is a whole different level let me yeah. tell you I'm, I'm learning stuff still i feel very humbled going yeah. to these things like, you know without going into too much detail one of the first major porns i've done you know you go to these bachelorette parties they last maybe like an hour you go in you're the man you're in control but when you go into these big porn shoots you're not the man and you're not in control yeah you're there is thing and they expect you to sometimes stay hard three four or five hours jesus on command and i'm let me tell you man i just I was able to pull off my first big shoot I did as far as like, there's two kinds of porns. You have the ones where you kind of act on, where you have like a whole script, yeah. and they have a gonzo one. Gonzo porn is like you're just straight up, one camera angle, and just just fucking. Yeah. I'll shoot gonzo porns all day long. <laughs> because you just get into like the, the groove. It's like there's no, but when you have to like act... And like you have to do photos with your clothes on, then photos with your clothes off, then you're redoing scenes and get hard and don't be hard and get hard and don't be hard and get hard and don't be hard. Let me tell you, man, I can't believe I'm even admitting this. It's hard for me. <laughs> well, yeah, that's hard for anybody. No, there's guys out there that can handle it. Yeah, 100 percent is. But it, it, it's a whole nother le- level, and it's like I like it now. I'm I'm in the very new process. I have a company that's being very patient with me. Yeah, and they like me. And they're working with me, which I think is great. But I'm telling you, man, I didn't think at this point in my career I was going to learn stuff. But crossing over into the mainstream porn, I'm learning there's a different pace to it. Yeah. There is. There's a whole different pace to it. And uh, it's uh, it's fun. It's fun. <laughs> but, man, it's there's pressure staying hard for eight, five, six hours. Yeah, man. Uh, you know, shout out to every male porn star. That can fucking sh- knock that shit out 100%. Dude, you have my full respect. Because, you know, even from a guy like me, a fucking stud, <laughs> like Mason Knox, like seriously, like I've entertained thousands, if not millions of women. Uh, yeah, but yeah, you have. I have. Yeah. And coming from that, being able to walk into a porn set and just be able to knock that shit down, you're a fucking G. Uh, yeah, you're a G if you can do that. Yeah, that's intense, man. And uh, and I imagine uh, are are they using performing enhancing drugs or is everybody pretty uh, pretty clean and off the Viagra and everything on these things? So on those sets, you know, you're not you're not yeah. allowed to. I mean, if if you do those things, you have to do them on your own free will. I mean, it's, you're not allowed to be offered those on set. It's, you know, so but I'm sure there's some of that going around. Yeah, I'm sure there is. Um, in my experience, um, uh, maybe yeah, that's what I need. I wouldn't start doing that though that's what I mean. unless you have to you have to but i'm saying like uh uh again man when you're alone with a girl or you're running a bachelorette party and it's just fun fun it's just different and then all of a sudden when you have like you know you, you know, even here with this podcast you know you got your little lights and your cameras imagine that amplified on these porn sets there's a camera guy his assistant his assistant, a lighting guy, a girl that yells out your lines and what the scene's going about. Like, you have like fucking five or six people in the room on top of the extras. Okay, yeah. get hard. <laughs> uh, please work. <laughs> <laughs> and that's enough to psych yourself out right there. You so know? that's it. It's up here, man. So yeah. I have a, without naming names, I have a guy in the industry that's going his extra effort to yeah. working with me because he knows how good I am. He does. 
And I just am. It's just it's just all there is to it. It's just all there is to I it, man. I love you, man. I've been in the game. Like, I'm not a fucking flexor, dude. Yeah. It's just I've been like a, 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 on the opposite end of that. You know how many fucking times I've been told my whole career, you're too small. You're too skinny. Oh, yeah. You don't look like a stripper. Okay, you can have my job, bro. I've been doing it for 15 years. And yeah. every group of girls I walk into leave satisfied. Yeah. So as far as that, I'm a G. But man. Walking into those fucking porn places, dude, is just a whole different thing. I'm, I'm, I'm still a G, but a G in learning. <laughs> a G, a G in training. Yeah, dude, because it's a whole nother, it's a whole nother level, and it's just, just like a kid, man. It's the mental thing. Yeah, yeah, that's it. You just gotta get comfortable around people. It's all. So, like I said, when it comes to like Gonzo style, dude, I'll fucking smash it all day long. <laughs> Gonzo. Yeah, Gonzo's just like straight up. It'd be like if you yeah. just like paid someone to like hold the camcorder for like you and your wife. Yeah. You just have another guy in the room that you like or whatever. He just happens to be there holding the camera. But like, oh, man, the other main, mainstream porn, man. Hats off to all the fucking males out there. He'd do it. Yeah. That can do it time and time again. That's hard. Literally. Literally. Or it's not. <laughs> or it's not. And you, 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 don't, you don't get asked back. That's for yeah. damn sure. And then you're in trouble. 100%. Oh man, yeah. I don't think I could. Do, I don't think I would be able to accomplish that, man. That's a that's a lot of pressure. It's okay. Yeah. Not a lot of people have. You have to have, to have the mind frame for it. And yeah. uh, 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 even me, with such like an open mind and being like the adult film industry for the the adult entertainment industry, rather for so long, it's it's definitely been a learning experience. I'm still learning things. It's it's uh it's great. I I, I I'm looking forward to doing more films. I'm looking forward to working with more people. And it's 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 been a great experience. Everybody that I've met in the porn industry has been super fucking so nice. Yeah. Yeah. I imagine so. I so mean, nice. You wouldn't think, though, because yeah. the way the porn's described or the, the see, or uh, uh, depicted. Yeah. Shady. The, the, no, it's some of the nicest people I've ever met. It's just people making movies, man. Yeah. You know, when it comes down to it, they're just, they're shooting a, they're shooting a product, editing it, and putting it out. That's it. Yeah. And they're not, you know, a lot of them are really nice about it. Yeah, of course. You know, it's like, you know, they tell you to get hard. Take your time, man. Just get it up there. Just take your time. All right. Throw some port on my phone, you know. Uh, Pop it up there, and then uh, 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 you know, just hope it stays stays hard because you know your 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 brain goes to my dick needs to stay hard. Yeah. Rather than just concentrating on you have a hot girl or a hot trans woman in front of you. Yeah. And it's just enjoying that moment. You're trying. You're like I said, it's a psych out. Yeah. If you get past the psych out, you'll last forever. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was, uh, I, I totally know what you mean, man. When I was in my younger days trying to run around and and slap as much ass as I possibly could, it was always like a psych out thing, like, uh, you know, perform right now kind yeah. of thing. And I was just in my own head fucking. If you get in your head, it'll destroy you. Yeah. Because you're not sexually, as a man, like, it's very easy for us, you know, to be attracted, but it takes very little. If something gets in your head. Yeah. If something gets in the big head, the little head ain't working. <laughs> it's so true. Uh, they have those they have those uh i'm not prescribed to them but i, I know there's those uh the dick shots you can get I oh haven't, wow i haven't done those yet you just you know you take a shot to your penis and i guess it makes you super hard for how long i think all day all day i think till you come and Jeez, you don't come, i think that kind of stays in your system a little bit and it just you kind of it's like i i think it's like like if you don't touch it i think i've never done one but i think if you like you don't touch it it like kind of stays somewhat semi yeah. It's fine, but as soon as you start playing with it, it just goes straight up and just stays up until you come. And even after you come, I've heard the side effects last a day or two to where you're like, you just, just you get hard. hard, super easy. Jeez. But then you, just, <laughs> then again, you're messing with your blood pressure. You're messing with your heart. You yeah. Know, shit like that. So just full disclosure, team out there looking to do porn, do dick pills and shots. Be careful. Yeah. It man. ain't worth it. That's, that's like uh, juice and steroids. Probably or, worse. You know? Probably worse. Fucking up your, uh, fucking up your body, dude. I I messed around with some Viagra before, and uh, my friend had some, and he gave me some. I was like, whatever, yeah. I'm you take a whole seeing one? a girl later tonight. By by my, yeah, I, I should know. No, I, I, should I, know. I so I had a doctor a long time ago. Yeah, give me some of those because I told him what I do for a living, and he said, here, just in case you know. I never took one when he gave them to me. Yeah, he gave me. He was a friend of mine. He warned me. He gave me a four pack. Yeah, he was Mason. Do not, do not eat a whole one of these. He goes, take less than half. Yeah. He said, nibble the side of it. It's all you need. <laughs> do not take a whole one. So I've heard, I've heard horror stories yeah. 
of people taking those whole ones and it like shins your heart into like a super irregular beat. You feel like you can't breathe. You feel like you're going to pass out. You get real hot and you get flushed. I've heard that from people. Yeah. And dude, for me, it, it made my dick so hard. It hurt. It felt like my dick was going to explode. Did you or, come? Like rip through the skin. And then it's really hard to come. Okay. Well, yeah. well, after you came, it went down, didn't it? Yeah. 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 It just took, it took a while. Like, it was just it was very distracting man better than that you yeah. didn't feel uh you didn't have the other like you didn't feel light because i've heard that before if you take a yeah. whole one my, yeah. my brother took a whole one once and thought yeah. he was gonna have a heart attack no i didn't have anything with like that man just like but then it it, it like i feel like it damaged the head of my cock <laughs> like i feel like the nerve endings and everything like it like pushed so much blood down there that like the the following like week or two after I took one, I was like I was having problems getting like sensation and and like staying erect and stuff. And I was like I stay the fuck away from that stuff, man. Yeah, if you don't need it, you don't know. Take it. And uh, it was like it was freaking me out. If you have to do it again, you just one pill will last you three or four times, bro. Yeah, for sure. Like yeah. definitely don't take the whole one. I was definitely but, warned by my doctor when he yeah. gave me those. He like with a big time. He said, do not. <laughs> take a whole one so, uh, and that scared me my, I, I, cause I've done I've done drugs before in the past yeah I'm like I can take what are you talking about I can, I can take two or three Xanax and be fine you're telling me I can't handle one dick pill what is this thing <laughs> they're monsters man I didn't have a doctor give it it was just a buddy gave it to me and I just popped the motherfucker and uh yeah that was rough I mean I mean we had a, we had a good time with it that yeah. night you know but uh what you and your buddy me and my buddy and my friend and the stripper and <laughs> all right wild man <laughs> fucking uh no you know it's uh when we were young man working and working in rock and roll and and having a good time yeah for sure but yeah man like uh uh the, you know the the the, uh, the adult tennis, the adult sex or, or adult movie industry has been great um as far as like my book and stuff goes that's literally focuses more on my you know 15 something odd career as a private stripper in vegas so again, like uh, uh, the book will be out this fall, um, Mason Knox. It's the uh, the the uh, the true story of a Las Vegas adult entertainer. Um, it's gonna be great. I I I I I've enjoyed writing this thing. I'm really looking forward to 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 uh, uh, to you guys uh, uh, hearing some of these stories, reading about some of the stories I've gone through, and just just kind of the crazy fucking shit I've seen out here in fucking lost wages. Yeah, you know. If, dude, it was the the sample you gave me was a lot of fun to read, man. I'm looking forward to reading the actual book. I'll definitely support you and buy a copy for sure. Oh, and, yeah, all right. You know, it was it, dude. It's, it seems like it's going to be a lot of fun, man. It's been a great writing it. I, uh, um, uh, you know, just like I said, you meet a lot of people. I, uh, you know, like I said I've done a lot of parties. Like, uh, uh, I'll end on this. I, I had a, uh, 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 there's a lot of specialty parties. We good. I, I was like ask about this on like YouTube and stuff. Like, you know, I've done like uh, parties that like stick out to me. I've done birthday parties. I've done divorce parties. I've done bachelorette parties. I've done parties parties. I've done because you guys want to have a party party. So uh, one that sticks out to me a lot was uh, uh, on the south side of town. There was this house over by the South Point. Um, and I got called to go do a house party. And when I get there, you know, I meet the husband and I meet the daughter. I meet the kids. They all meet me outside. And they let me know that this is a, a hospice party. Oh, wow. Mom's going to die. It's her birthday. You know, she's there. She's going to be dead in a few months. They want to get her a fucking stripper. Nice. She wants a stripper. The whole family's there. It's great. And uh, uh, I think they had me come in as a cowboy and uh, walked in. She was on her, uh, you know, the hospice bed. And I did a whole dance next to her by her bed. She had the biggest fucking smile on her face. I just remember feeling so good about being able to bring some joy to her. Before she passed on, as silly as it sounds. Yeah. As dumb as it sounds. Yeah. I know I'm just a stripper. But it felt so good to go in there and do that for her. And the family was great. I remember we were knocking down. I ended up after dancing for the girl and having a great time. We did pictures. We did the whole thing. I ended up going in the backyard because they had a big party going on, having shots and drinks with the husband. And him telling me that he loved his wife so much and how it meant so much to him to watch her have a smile on her face. Yeah. And had me there. So, like, you know... A lot of us, you know, a lot of the stripping stuff obviously is going to be a bunch of debauchery and, and drinking and drugging and sex. But, you know, you get a handful of times where you actually bring 
real happiness to people. Yeah. And I love that because, you know, the older I've gotten, I've learned that, you know, happiness doesn't rely on yourself. It relies on the happiness of other people. So you feel really, really happy when you do nice things for other people. Um, there was that one uh, that I did. That was years ago. Another one where that girl actually wrote me and told me she had passed away. I had done a party last year um, at the Hilton. Um, uh, it was a mom, another older woman's birthday, and she loved Elvis. You know, I have pictures of this, too. I have pictures of me and her together. Kind of sad thinking about it. She was really fun. It's a morning party. The, you know, there was only a handful of family there. And I did the whole Elvis routine. I did ain't nothing but a hound dog. Um, uh, came in and did, just, just, just had a fucking great time with her and ended up having a few drinks and I'm hanging out with her son and daughter. And then they, the, the, the joy I got from them telling me what a smile I put on their face and how she loved it. They were writing me on Instagram a little bit after that. And, you know, I got a, you know, I got a message not, you know, not too long ago in the past that you know, she had passed away. And it's sad to hear that, but to know that I was a fucking fun, joyous time in someone's life at the end feels really fucking good to me. Yeah. You know, and I used to take care of my grandpa. He passed away last year. For those of you who don't know, he died at 94. I just think I have a, maybe I am a people pleaser. You know. Well, yeah, man. You as know. far as when it comes to stripping, I love it. I love the attention. I love the money. It's fun. But on a more deeper level, being able to do stuff for older people and put a smile on their face really makes me happy. That's beautiful, man. It does. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and like, I mean, sexuality is like a big part of the human experience, man. And, I, and it brings a lot of people a lot of joy, and it's like part of, it's part of living this life, man. Being sexual is definitely part of this life. Yeah. You know, it, it, it is. And it's, 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 it can be fun. It can be playful. It can also be dark and weird. Yeah. It's on the person to do that. Yeah. You know, but as far as my experiences and what I've done, it's, it's most of the time, it's a very, very pleasurable, fun experience. And <laughs> being able to do those special parties where you... Excuse me, where you feel like you've, you've, uh, you've actually brought legit smile and legit light and love into someone's life it feels great, and you get paid doing it. You know, it's great. It's a it's a win win. I, I, those parties, I feel good, even though I feel sad when I read the messages and you reminisce. It's normal human behavior to yeah think back and you know get a little you think about shit. And, you know, get sad now, but. Those are some of the ones I, I'd been asked about that on, on previous shows I've done. So I just wanted to, I never told the hospice stories on a podcast before. So, well, thank you for sharing. I think this is an appropriate podcast to share that on, you know, so it's that's like uh, the, the, the life and death. It's, you know, it's, it's yin and yang, man. And it's, it's part of the whole thing. Life isn't, life is meaningless, meaningless without the, uh, the inevitable death that follows it, you know, that timer on there. That clock that's ticking down for all of us, you know, it brings meaning to every moment, makes everything that much more valuable and worth going out and doing something about it. Yeah, because it's not forever. And, you know, one of my favorite, you know, I don't want to say, I don't know if favorite would be the word to use, but the biggest person I look up to on this planet, as far as a mortal being, is Marcus Aurelius. Yeah. That's Marcus a good Aurelius, one. in my opinion, was the greatest man that ever lived. Stoicism, man. It's my opinion. I understand if you don't agree with it. But he had a few great sayings. You think about death. Yeah. You know, and this, take, this is taken from Gladiator. He wouldn't have said it just like this. But there is a saying that death smiles at us all. All a man can do is smile back. And that's all you can do, whether you like it or not. Yeah. That's it. So smile. Be nice. This is all going away at some point. So I always like to say, you know, like I, I ended you know, the last podcast I did, you know, I had a Charlie Murphy quote. That's why I love, you know, you, you grow up being taught, you got to earn my respect, boy. <sighs> no, dude, respect everybody. Allow them to earn your disrespect. And once they do that, you just move on. Yeah, that's it. Too many people in this life to uh, waste time on people that are disrespectful. That's it, man. But uh, again, like I said, I, 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 uh, I thank you so much for, uh, for letting me come on here and chat, bro. Thanks for taking time out of your day to come and yeah. hang out with me, man. I miss you, man. I miss you. Yeah. Take it more often, A lot of bro. people don't know her. Me and, yeah. me and Jason, uh, Jason and I have been good friends for many, many years. 
we said uh, uh, we played in a rock and roll ba- band together for uh, many, many years. We, we've toured. We've been on the East Coast and back. We've done TV shows together. We, we, we rocked. The, we've rocked. We definitely rocked the fuck out of Vegas. <laughs> we had a good time, bro. Yeah. Uh, you know, we've been uh, everywhere. So, uh, again, man, thank you for having me out here. And, and, and not to sound like, you know, selfishly promoting, but I do have a book coming out this fall. Dude, you're here to promote your book, I man. know. I'm here. I've got a book coming That's out. Listen, for. if you guys like my stories, like I said, man, as, as a dancer, you're going to love the book. It literally just kind of shows that you know i talk about nudes of pop in which is a big porn dancing competition that goes on in chicago you know i talk about the hospice hospice parties <clears throat> the, the united states marine and the united states air force is hiring me to do parties um i talk about couples i talk about it all i had a major major ceo of a fast food chain within the last couple of years pay me to fuck his wife <laughs> and his exact i'll end with this <laughs> i'll end with this his exact uh, words were, you better suck his dick now or I'm not going to marry you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Peace and love, man. Thank you. Man. That is it. Well, and so with that, uh, <laughs> thanks for watching To the Fullest with Jason Froberg. Follow us on uh, social media. Give us a like. Ring the bell. Uh, hit the subscribe button and uh, support us on Patreon and PayPal. Uh, follow Mason on social media. Yeah, you can follow me on social media. And I, I, Again, it's MasonKnox.com. I spell Mason like Sin City. So it's M-A-S-I-N K-N-O-X. There's the website right there. Right there. Knox. It's a landing page. You can book me. My OnlyFans. It has all my social media. And in case you guys are wondering um, how I got my name, I am the son of Mickey and Mallory Knox from Natural Born Killers. <laughs> so I'm still looking for my mom and dad. So uh, Mickey, Mallory, if you're listening to this, uh, your son's out in Vegas all by himself. He could use a little guidance. Oh, that's beautiful, man. And with that, peace. Peace. Thank you for watching To The Fullest with Jason Froberg. You can check out more podcasts right here and subscribe by clicking right here.